Hey, you guys. Hey there. Is it so hard for you to not to press play? And, yep, there you go. I was going to say, say, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I saw this funny oh. meme, episode 409, by the way. I saw this funny meme where it was like a Tiger King meme with like Carol at the top. And it was like at 8 a.m. of homeschooling. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. And then at the bottom, it was Joe Exotic. And it was like 8.05. Listen up, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is exactly what that homeschooling is, is like. The, my favorite, there's like, a, you know how we were talking last time uh, about like new favorite accounts to follow. There's one called like Tiger King Memes. Definitely follow that. <laughs> De- it does not disappoint. Everything is hilarious. <laughs> I got a message from one of our brainiacs who's a trans man and he was saying how he didn't watch it because, you know, they, um, misgendered Saf Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and they also dead named him and all that. And I totally get it. That was a real bummer. I had watched it already by the time I learned that, but yeah, same. That was real shitty. I don't know why the filmmaker would do that. That's very unusual. And then when I go back and replay it in my mind and think about all of the news, uh, uh, you know, when they play clips of the news from that, when that horrific moment happened, they always, always refer to him as a woman. Really? On yeah, the it was like woman gets, yeah, it was like woman gets arm ripped off at zoo. Oh, that's, that sucks. You know. Yeah, I'm not into that. I wish that hadn't yeah. happened. But, and that's why um, I had uh, made that assumption as well. Yeah, right. No, we were all misinformed. Totally. There was no mention of the trans yeah. situation. But now I know. We would have I'm definitely remembered about that. It. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I would have been mm-hmm. psyched. And I do like that component about Tiger King that he, Joe Exotic was yeah. this sort of gay icon in the South because nobody else is so out and proud at that time. But, mm-hmm. and like a lot yeah. of the employees, you know, were attracted to that element. And I like that, but they're still not getting it quite right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm can't just turn a blind eye to some of the other things well, and it's like there are really, other gay eight icons work. Susie. <laughs> i think that's, that's the thing it's like they were doing so many terrible things it's hard to know what to right. be mad at right but anyway oh god i digress hello sarah how are hello. you hello ah, hello i'm doing well welcome to the show how do yes. you feel? What do you feel about the you know your soul right now? Here's here's what I learned. Um, I I do great with um like three meals a day. I've had that. <laughs> like I never had that before. Really happy for I'm you. Really enjoy really enjoying <laughs> that because now I'm stuck at home and I'm not like driving all around all over the place. And uh, I am like the luckiest luckiest person right now because I am with a chef. You who are is lucky. making. The most amazing meals. Oh, my God. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, the and quality like, of life improves there. That's his way to relax and unwind and, and you his know. love language, Sarah. Totally. And I get to benefit. But, you know, for <laughs> me, I told him, I'm like, if, 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 mm-hmm. if you weren't like this, if it were just me, I, I would have already get, we, I would have already gone through the two two 12 packs of top ramen by now that would have you know been... what i wouldn't have even been mad about that right because i am never sad that i eat top ramen yeah but he takes the top ramen and then puts the like like dresses it up like does it with like mm-hmm. the chicken and the <laughs> like the soft boiled egg and the green onions and the he even fried garlic to put on it i mean come on who does that <laughs> he not elevates. me he elevates <laughs> all of it it's like you know i'm like man we should put out a quarantine cookbook Oh my God, I'm surprised there isn't one yet. No joke. I mean, as soon as I said that, well, my friend Courtney, shout out to Courtney, she texted me that. She was like, oh my gosh, you guys put out quarantine cookbook. And then I told Red, uh, Ren that text and he was like, hey. And I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Do, 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 we don't need to add anything to the do, to-do list. We haven't even hung the shelves in the office yet. Slow down. <laughs> That's amazing that you've been locked up all this time and there's still a lot to do. Oh my gosh. So much to do. Yes. Yeah. That is a good thing. Yeah, I'm all Thank for goodness that. I, I unloaded all that craft stuff. Imagine. I would have just been like <laughs> crocheting in the corner and ignoring all the actual things on my to do <laughs> list. I would have been like totally procrastinating crochet, crocheting. <laughs> Everybody has their outlet. Yep, yep. I tend to do that. 
Well, I think I speak for all the brainiacs when I say we can't wait to hear about the thongs, the situation. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I was going to ask you, how did you celebrate the 20th anniversary of the thong song, Susie? That really makes me sick that it was 20th anniversary. Can you believe it? Does it, uh, it to me, it seems, does it seem like just yesterday? It does. It does. And uh, yeah. you know what's funny? Did you, I saw uh, Cisco once perform the thong song live <laughs> at Wango Tango. In, oh, yep, 2000 so with Britney Spears. Wow. Yeah, it almost feels like I was there for the, the, the real... <laughs> like the, the Cultural the, moment. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm really jealous, actually. Is he a good live performer? Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. You know, and that was what got me on this whole, like, like deep dive into the history of thongs, which now <laughs> so sounds <to> so... Re- <laughs> It was not a brief history. Uh, uh. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Uh. Oh, oh, this is because, rock bottom. Right? So when I read, when I, it was, it was going over, there was this article and it was like the history of the thong song. And what it shocked me is that Cisco put fa- far more uh, uh, thought and there was, it was far more like, you know, you think it's just like a, I don't know, mm. a, a novelty song kind of. Yeah. You what know? are you saying? But he was inspired by the Beatles song, Eleanor Rigby. What are you talking about? I swear, he was inspired by the Stop. strings, the, the sound of the, the music. So he took the, oh, um, there was like a 30 second part to Eleanor Rigby and he extended that into three minutes and he what? hired the violinists who did the soundtrack to Star Wars to I feel like you're d- just joking right now. I'm not. I swear to th- this is what it made me go, oh my God, I need to give Cisco more credit because this is like actually <laughs> a musical, like, 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 a, dare I say masterpiece <laughs> composed, <laughs> inspired by the Beatles, utilizing uh, like pop culture's favorite violinist who ever did a soundtrack or like score to a movie. Everybody okay, loves that one. Okay. Award winning. And I was Let's like, oh. back up though, because I mean, we're all inspired by the Beatles. That doesn't mean we're, you know, creating masterpieces. So I but, guess that I, I, cause I put him on, like I put him in my queue here. I, I put him in, um, you know, I pulled him, pulled up the songs and I'm like, can we play, can I even play clips of songs? Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever. We'll live on the edge. Right. So yeah. like, I, I, cause I wanted to like, see if we could like hear it. Okay. Are you going to you know? cue that up or what? Oh <laughs> yeah. No, I want but see like, yeah, I might have to, I have to think about like where it is, <laughs> but can you remember, best. can you remember that where in that song that like, there's like a, a, a what do you call it? Oh a, my a, God. Wait, the string yes, solo. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's what it is. I totally get what you're saying now. Yes. And I don't. The, th- the string solo from Eleanor Rigby is the same as the intro to the thong song. Okay. I am now on board and totally into this. Right? That is hilarious. I know, because I love that song. And I was like, oh, good on you. Wow. Yeah, so that was the history of the thong song. Maestro, that is fantastic. Okay, wait, I have some more questions about this. About the thong song? Yes. Okay. If you don't mind. Please. I want to know. I am no a- expert. I mean, I read a article and <laughs> no, no, listened to it a couple opinion. times. Yeah. No, okay, I okay, want okay. your opinion, which is, you know, I I love a one hit wonder. I think it's super cool. Totally. If you create a one hit wonder, a lot of people poo poo it like you're such a loser. Why do you only have one hit? And I think, hey, that's fantastic. You could probably live off of that at least, mm-hmm. uh, you know, modestly your whole life. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, First of all, Cisco is a one-hit wonder, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you? I think- mean, let's say put it this way: if I were to search in, like, say, Spotify <laughs> for Cisco, and it gave me like, like the top songs by artists, one through three would be remixes of the Thong song. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's his claim to fame. Yeah. Do you think he squandered his, oh. you know, as you say, sort of ability to create masterpieces by re- singing about thongs, or do you think that's why he had a hit? Maybe because wha- Ooh, he sang about Excellent thongs. question. Mm, mm-hmm. Music theory. Hmm. <laughs> Stop uh, it. I I would say that 
You know, I would want to know what is Cisco doing now. I did. I I went backwards in time, looking at the history of thongs, <laughs> rather than forwards and looking at where <laughs> where is he now. I think so, he's probably still singing that song. You know because, what I mean? But sometimes, you know, people go they they start like producing, yeah, producing and right. doing more of like the behind like the Sir scenes Mix a stuff. Lot. Yeah, and so like yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe it's like. Okay, so we I need to know what we he's need doing to know now. Where we need Cisco to know like now. where is he now? Where is yeah? Cisco maybe now? he's producing people rather than yeah. Uh, <laughs> what if he's producing Paul McCartney now? It's like gone. Oh full my god! Circle. Stop. Well, that's what he. That, so he wanted to buy. Like originally, he wanted that um, exact clip, but because he yeah. couldn't afford it, and at the time Michael Jackson owned all the yeah. rights, and mm-hmm. it was going to be too expensive. So that's why he expanded it and changed just that he altered the strings to it good for him yes so he like took that he was like okay how can i alter the strings enough to where it's like now you know my whatevs well one thing that you should alter your strings on (laughs) segue (laughs) is um the towel clean facial brush which is friggin' fantastic. Oh, I'm we using it. We talked about that. Yeah, I'm using it too. And we talked about it last time because we became aware that it is the only uh, facial brush with um, that can kill like 99.9% of bacteria. Yes. And it has the um, UVC brush head dryer and the charger all in one. So you put it on your sink and it charges it and then it dries it and gets it all clean as a whistle. Mm-hmm. And then there's the two... Um, Brush heads, there's like the daily one that you can use to clean your face. And then there's the exfoliating one that you can use like when things get real, you know, dire straits. I love that face. exfoliating one. Me too. A little deep I mean, clean. Yep. Every few I need days. all the help I can get mm-hmm. over here. I need to slough off all the uh, <laughs> yeah. aging that's going on and the whatever else is in the air. Who knows? Question mark. Um but these type of brushes usually cost an arm and a leg, and that's why we're excited about Towel Clean because they are, have made it affordable, and they're giving you guys an awesome deal. They're offering our listeners 62% off the Towel Clean Orbital Face Brush. If you're ready to elevate your skincare and see incredible results quickly, you need to get the Towel Clean Orbital Face Facial Brush. We got... Um, a message from somebody that bought it and is loving it. Um, you won't find anything else like it. You also see on the site the brush gets raving five star reviews. It's not just us loving it. Again, Tau Clean is offering our listeners sixty two percent off the Tau Clean Orbital Facial Brush. Normally, it retails for one forty nine. So this discount also applies towards any product site wide, which is freaking great. Just go to Towel TowelClean dot com today and enter code Brain Candy to take advantage of this incredible savings. That is T A O C L E A N dot com and enter code Brain Candy to get sixty two percent off a facial brush and site wide. Tell clean. Okay. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, he changed the strings. Yes. And then made a monster hit. Yeah. And then it's a very it. catchy song. Would you agree? Y- yes. And what I listened to it a few times, of course, as I had to in like you know oh, thinking research. about the research. Come on, for, for research <laughs> purposes only. And I was like. This is a bop. This is a good song. This is, it a, is. This is a jam. Yeah. Do you, can you pull that one up and play it? Yes. Since we're already like violating licensing. I mean, barely. It laws. was like 10 seconds. I mean, come on. Okay. <laughs> Let's pump it. Let's pump it. The jams? Let's hear it. Listen. Oh. Yep. Listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. What do guys talk about? <laughs> the Cisco? spoken word. Yes. The fun of things in life. Oh. Mm-hmm. I remember the video too with all the ladies on the beach. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. like ish with a look and ass so devilish. Oh yes, that is the <laughs> jam. So good. It is it so really good. Is. I guarantee everybody's gonna listen to that, and then you guys are gonna be like, "Damn, this is a good song." You can't help but like it, right? Mm. You just can't. But the thing that that really like blew my mind when I was thinking about all this is like, so that feels like just yesterday, right? Yes, it does. To me, if I asked you, like, how long have thongs been a thing? Like, (laughs) the underwear, the undergarment. What would your answer be? What would you... Doesn't it seem like they've just, like, been around for forever? 
No, well, no, I would say that it was right about that time. That Gosh, they became, to me, maybe, maybe it's think. like when I first started buying my own underwear, thongs like were already a thing. What year was that, though? So that was 1999. Yeah, that's when this damn song came out in 2000, right? Yeah, 2000, yes. So it was like 1999 that like thongs came on the scene. But oh my gosh. <laughs> came on the scene. Came on the scene. But for real, okay. So that took me into a deep dive. And I just couldn't believe that because in my mind, I was like, I felt like my mom must have been like on the <laughs> cutting edge. Yes. On the cutting <laughs> edge of like women's undergarments, like fashion or whatever, well, like very yeah. European or like, you know, after my history, South American, because that's who really embraced the thong <laughs> yeah, culture. Brazilian. Baby. Yes. And because I remember growing up and like, that was what my mom always wore. Yeah. So to me, it was like something that always existed. So then when I, I, I did a little, you know, deep dive into the thong, I was like, what? I can't believe this. So the first, <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys the, the info that I learned because I can't freaking rob you of this. So <laughs> we know that like centuries ago, men were wearing thongs like sumo wrestling and like 25 oh, CE, yeah. they were wearing thongs like the, um, you know, Minoan, like some like hunter and gatherer like tribes and things like that were wearing thongs it was mostly men but when <laughs> thongs became like first showed up in the united states it was in 1939 at the world's fair in new york wow come yes. on yes and i'll tell you why so the french were exhibiting um or showcasing uh burlesque dancers okay. and at the time the burlesque dancers were nude and Mayor LaGuardia mm. of New York at the time was like, oh, hell no, not in our city. Yeah. You can't be like strutting around stage with your, you know, lady parts Gucci. all hanging out. Yeah. So the French were like, hmm, we want to cover up. But like, we can't cover up their butts. That's the best looking part. So they developed the thong for wow. that reason. Necessity, again, the mother of invention. Totally. And then it kind of mm. like fell by the wayside. And it was really only in like burlesque performance and things like that where the thong showed up and then back and then in like the 70s somebody came out with like a thong swimsuit and that was popular for like a minute in the yeah. united states but then became super super popular in south america in latin america and then in 1980 frederick of hollywood were the mm. first to really like make Go it available it. but they called mm. them something different they called them scanty panties that's worse Worse, way worse. Like so, na- I that that, that and they were sold in the same section as the edible underwear and crotchless mm. panties, and they <laughs> okay, were like it was a, a naughty novelty. thing, okay. which then makes me think, um, mom, why were you buying underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Sc- why were you wearing scanty panties, Sally? Sally. <laughs> so that cracked me. How up. do you even know she was wearing thongs? Are you like a naked family? Um, well, we were like a. I just remember always you know what it was is i used to like sleep in my mom's bed or whenever she would go to work early in the morning she was in the film industry so she would get up super super early for these like early shoots and Mm. it was so much fun i in fact i might have like nostalgic memories of this where like she would get up early and i would wake up too and probably because i had to because i was a baby and needed she probably needed to feed me (laughs) and take care of me i'm like duh now that i think about that um and uh, and I would watch her. I would just sit there, and she would put yeah. on Mickey's Mouser size. This like ja- wow. it's like a Jazzer size for kids video, and she'd put that on the TV. And I would watch that, and I would like dance around, and I would watch her as she would get ready for work. And so I always remember seeing her, and she always had like matching sets too. And I was always like, Dad, her under undergarment game is tight. So <laughs> yeah, she always had cute ones, and okay. um, yeah. So I just remember that like as a kid, like seeing that. And yeah, you probably not in the uh, my old Meister household. Well, we are not. We were the opposite of a nudist family. Like I've never seen anybody in their underpants. Period. What? No way. No. Oh no. My God, that's we're so, very modest. That's so yeah, that's just so. How are you with Lincoln? I'm a naked family over here. Yes, I was going to yeah. say that's not how you are. In fact, I would probably be a more modest family than you guys are. <laughs> what yeah. happened? Is this like the access to alcohol thing, where like if you like <laughs> don't allow it, that like they go in the other direction? Is that what happened here? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, um, but I do think there is some th- something to the fact that when you get 
breast implants, you almost feel like it's not your body anymore. Uh-huh. You know how like when people get a boob job, they're always like, hey, want to see them? Yes. It's for real. I have seen and touched random women's boobs in bathrooms <laughs> who have gotten their breast and are just like, you should touch them. And I'm like, yes. I don't know how to say no to this. <laughs> yeah. I think it feels there's a distance then between your own nudity and shame yes. that would normally accompany that um, and the breast implant. Yes. But also I do reject the shame. I don't think your body should be something that's like shameful amongst your family members. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, we should be, you know, and I, I think it's just, imp- yeah, important to like, I don't know. Yeah. Talk about no like stigma, please. No stigma. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. And also you, P.S. Sidebar, like side note, whatevs. Uh, use the right names for body parts, please. Oh, yes. That's a big we one. We do that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Back to thongs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after the scanty panties of the 1980s, the next time thongs really like make a uh, reappearance is in 1990 with the Monica Lewinsky trial. Oh, do you remember told, this? Yeah, yeah. She asked him if she wanted he wanted to see it, or he asked to see it, or something. Uh huh. In the Oval Office, I remember that. Yeah, this was like a thing during the time where yes, it became almost fat ugh, fashionable mm-hmm. to have the, the strings. Tail. The whale tail. <laughs> oh my god! They did not say that in the article. That is <laughs> such a funny word that I've totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I, uh, that was an awful time for me. <laughs> for like, Why, I mean, low cut jeans were not friendly to, yeah, to, no. th- they were not flattering to prepubescent teenagers no. with, you know, body They're really issues. not flattering to anyone. For anyone, for like mm. two people. And I swear mm. to God, if those make a comeback, I am going to be pissed. I'm really hoping that, like, because we talked about this a little, like, a while ago, where, like, for a minute, I saw, like, people trying to, like, bring back low rider They're coming jeans. Back. They're coming nope, back. nope. I'm going to resist that. And I'm really hoping this, <laughs> like, you know, everybody being inside for a long time will make everybody real, like, just, like, all band together and be like, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> Or that there'll be together. no sales of any of those, so they'll just like stop producing yeah. them. Please yeah, please God, be like, we can we all can we all just be in agreement there? Can we all come together and just what if like that's do that? What unites us as a nation? Please, I'm already feeling like I'm going to start my own movement for for this or like fight for this. I mean, there are bigger things out there. I know. But yeah, one sakes. of them is knowing what's going on with your fertility. Very important. Very important. I've been thinking about it a lot because I keep reading, as you tweeted, about this bunker baby boom that may may be going on. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, I just want to say are, I was one of the first ones to tweet that out. Yeah, and, you know, we're all, you know, <laughs> needing affection. Yes, And attention. Do. And I think it does make a lot of people think, like, how, what are our families going to look like? Are we going to have more kids? Are we not? And it's just very empowering to know what is going on in your body. And that's why we recommend Modern Fertility. It's a test that you can try at home for a fraction of the price that would be if you went to a doctor's office. Um, It's the same test that you would get for like $1,000, but they are only cost $159 for the same information. And it tells you whether you have eggs, how they are looking in there, your hormone levels, uh, any reproductive red flags, which I think is such a good thing to know regardless of what you plan on doing. And it can help you make informed choices. And right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy. That means your test will cost $139 instead of hundreds or thousands it would cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy, modernfertility.com slash brain candy. Yes. All right. As you were. Yeah. You know, maybe those uh, thongs are just really, uh, you know, <laughs> turning your partner on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Maybe. Yes. So then 90s thongs, super big thing. And, yeah. uh. Now, then by 2001, um, the what would you guess by 2001, yeah. the percentage of uh, uh, Victoria's Secret sales were thongs? Oh, 2001. So they had just started. Ni- yeah, by 2001. Um, that's like five years. Be they've been. Yeah, get to give me a guess. Oh, okay. 2001, I would have said 
70 percent 90 percent wow and who really? is who wasn't wearing a thong that's actually really shocking yeah that's a lot that of thongs a lot of thongs <laughs> and it was like britney spears who wore it on the outside of her jeans in some music video i can't remember which one Mm-hmm. but yeah that really and then it was like all the little teenage girls asking for thong. i mean that was like all i wore when it was like the yeah, thing i remember too. that it's like oh are you wearing a thong you gotta be wearing a thong yeah it was real sexy yeah, and now it's, like, gone in the other direction. Yeah, what is the deal now? What are people doing? People are kind of, like, I did read an article, but it came out in, like, 2017, that millennials like more of a tradition, like, a, a, like a vintage look, that we're more oh, into, like, cute. high-waisted, more of, yeah. like, you know, I like, I like those that. sets. See, millennials know what's up in that regard. Yeah. I w- I'd be curious to see what the male, uh, 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 you know, like what the the feeling is there. If they like, I truly believe they do not give a shit, and that everything is just like we're yeah, duped probably. into thinking desirability alters depending on what we wear. They don't care. They want you to take all of it off. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. Sometimes they like you to leave some of it on, or you get yeah, the kind that can stay on. Hi oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely in the scanty I mean, panty section. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think they would care whether they were thong cut or not. I think if you're a guy who's into lingerie, then then you do. You have preference. Maybe preference, but I think yeah. you're pretty happy yeah. to get laid regardless. That, this is true. This is 100% true. But like <laughs> if you were to ask, if you were to like put them, if you were to put yeah. the same body into like five different pairs of underwear, <laughs> which one, I would be curious to see which one would Ooh, be yeah, like which the most they would popular. choose. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you should ask Ren. Do you know his opinion? Yeah, I think he. I, I think he likes a thong. I don't okay. know. I, I'll ask him. I'll see for research purposes. Yeah, but like a boy shirt looks really cute on. Um, so cute. Like big bottoms as well. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. The cheeks kind of stick out. That's the bottom. my favorite. Me too. I love that look. Yeah, I love. Maybe we're that. weird. Maybe yeah. boys are like, yeah, no, we're not into that. And then, like some guys, it's like they like the panty line look. Some people don't. So, really? Knows? Yeah, I've seen. I okay, know guys who are like so into that. Today. They're like, "Ooh, yeah, yeah." Ooh, speaking of learning so much about the other sex, I got another <laughs> story for you. Okay. Totally change. Totally switching gears over here. But this one I read and I was like, "What? Record scratch? What?" Okay. What so, is it? So you know how we love stories about uh, um, um, what's that really tall mountain? Friggin' Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my brain took a vacation for a sec because I'm. I was What's thinking. Really I was very distracted mountain? by the subject matter that I'm about to talk about. So yeah, we get worked up about Mount Everest. Yes. Okay. So mm-hmm. you know what's totally a thing that I did not know uh, was a thing until uh, Vice Magazine came out with an article about this. Hmm. High altitude boners. <gasps> I'm so happy right now. Yeah. You are lying. I swear it's totally a thing. Do you think that's why men get all fucking perverted on airplanes? Yes, Susie, because it's also called airplane boners. That was my (gasps) next thing I was going to tell you. Oh, my God. Yes. They are savage beasts. It's disgusting. Can you even believe that? (laughs) No, Sarah. Tell me what you know. So it was a, it was a, it was. It was not that long of an article. Um, I feel like there's a boner joke in there somewhere. I know, not <laughs> go, that long, eh? Go ahead. Yeah, maybe that's it. Um, and and the crazy thing was how long they last. They last Gross. for like two hours sometimes. And so this, <laughs> this guy who they were interviewing, he was like a young guy. Like he's a young climber who's probably like 26 or something like that. And he's um, attempted to climb Mount Everest like three times and, you know, just made it to the base camp. And they were saying like, you know, it, do you see, like, is this, like, something that happens? And he's like, oh, yeah, they're everywhere. Boners were just there. You look around, oh, and it's just, like... my God. They're just... You could just see them, and, like, nobody talks about them, but they're there. <laughs> Can you believe Sarah, that? That's fantastic. Yes. So they were, like... they The vice <laughs> reporter said, how long does it last? And he goes, about two hours per day, I think. You just had to drink a lot of water to speed up blood circulation. It also oh. kept my body warm and constantly moving. It's a patience game. What? What? Yes. And they said so it was, it's, the, it's really uncomfortable because they're all wearing, like, the really tight clothes. And so they, they got, like... Do you, you think know. that it's just Ooh. a physiological thing where... Um, yeah. 
you know, like a no reason boner, how, mm-hmm. how they get that sometimes? Yeah. Or do you think that they also get horny? Mm, I think it's the no reason boner. Okay. But then I think, you know, it's like anything. It's like, you know, yeah. oh my God, this is so silly to compare it to this. But you know the pencil test where you put a pencil in your mouth <laughs> and it makes the edges of your mouth yes. curl up in a smile. So then you, you it Feel elevates happy. your mood because you think you're smiling. So th- I think that's why, you know, guys are always like, you know, DTF in the morning because they get that and they're like, oh, well, I must <laughs> be turned on. Well, and if I you're also on an airplane. I am also DTF in the morning. So. Yeah, me too. I love Oof, a good morning romp. The best. Best one. Um, but... Maybe on an airplane where you're kind of bored and there's nothing to do, that's why it's more uh, problematic. Whereas if you're climbing yes. Mount Everest, you have a lot to think about. And yes. So they can control it. That's an, in fact, that's exactly what the, what the uh, climber said. So the reporter said, D- did a boner make it difficult to climb? And the guy said, mm-hmm. no, I didn't think it made much difference. It was difficult to hide, though, obviously. So if you're self-conscious, it, made an Im- it could have made an impact in your climb. My mind was already playing tricks on me with the lack of oxygen, so being mm. worried about how I looked wasn't beneficial. See, so I think that's why everybody's just ignoring them and pretending like they don't see them because you're all like, I can't worry about this right now. Like, my mind's doing weird shit anyway. Okay, Yes, but just hearing what he's saying about how like his mind's playing tricks on him, he's got no oxygen, he's got a random boner. Ugh. Why are people doing this? I will never understand it. Stop it. Oh, oh well, hang on a sec, Suze. When was the last <laughs> time guys com- complained about getting boners? I don't know that if that necessarily goes in the category of reasons not to do it. For some, I believe that that is more of a reason to do it. Maybe, but they don't see. He doesn't seem happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, One thing I am happy about and will improve your air is the Molecule Air Purifier. Oh my God. I was just on their website because I'm trying to decide which oh, one I want. I want this. I, you just told me that recently. You were like, I have got to get one of those. And I agree. Because like, the more I read about it, the more important it feels. Like Everything in the world, I've just been reassessing yes. everything, right? Yes. Yes. What's valuable? What matters? Yeah, clean like, air indoors definitely yes. matters right now. Hello. Yes, and so for I kind of was dragging my feet. Like, do I really need this? Is this important? And I think that it is. And so these molecule air purifiers just do the trick. It's not just pollen. They, you know, it handles all the sort of gunk from pollution yes. and crap that shouldn't be in the air, but is anyway. And helps keep your family safe. It destroys the pollutants. Um, It can really help people that suffer from allergies, which my son does. Um, And breathing clean air can help you sleep. It's just healthier. And this molecule um, system has been tested, vetted, and proven scientifically. We love that. Um, And they want to give you guys a deal, which you should definitely check out. Um, For 10% off your first... uh, air purifier order visit m-o-l-e-k-u-l-e dot com and then at checkout you enter brain candy 10 so 10 percent off your first air purifier order visit m-o-l-e-k-u-l-e dot com and uh, use code brain candy 10 um i think now is the time if there ever was one to make sure your home is like a proper nest and taking care of your family so check yes, that out if yes, you are inclined yes yes, yes. Mm. Anyway, so that's bonkers, and I love yes. it. Yes, and I don't know. hikers, man, getting boners. <laughs> what is the like scientific reason though that the lack of oxygen would make you have a? Bo- oh, it's blood restriction. Yeah, you say. Yeah, it has to do with circulation. So when <clears throat> circulation gets like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it really just shows how little we know about the penis. boners. Yeah, about boners, like airplane <laughs> boners. I mean, I love that we're discovering like so much about them now. But my, you know, my little brother, I feel like I'm calling him out right now, but he used to say that he would get a funny feeling there when we would go on roller coasters and he didn't like roller coasters because he was like, mm, it, it tickle, it like feels weird. And then he would like point down. And so I wonder it's if it's the same kind of thing. Penis. Oh, I don't when know. It- Ken, man, we really need. Hey, Adam. <laughs> hey, Ren. <laughs> right. Well, I guess it makes sense, though, if it's about blood flow. But yes. why wouldn't that also be true on, um, for vaginas? I've never had that with my vagina. Me either. I would love yeah. it. Yeah, that's got a great. nice little, little tickle down there. Why not? <laughs> I'm never mad about that. Yeah. 
They did all the breaks, I, I those do, guys. I do, however, get that right before my period is about to start. What do you mean you get that? Like I get like a weird like, I think that might be like blood flow to that area. Like more, and I it's almost like get like- It's like a red like, alert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. It's hilarious but like the week before it'll i'll just be like sitting there and it'll get like it'll like almost like a pulse and oh it's just nice. like a little like ooh, hello that's know, real handy so tingle, then you know tingle. it's coming at least yeah in like the nice way what a nice little tap tap on the shoulder reminder <laughs> yeah a little tingle you're it's weird because i always say i'm um a highly sensitive person but you have these weird quirks where you claim that you know the exact moment that your totally. body releases its egg. Yep, and from which side, I can always tell. I mean, that's ridiculous. I'm not alone in that. There's an actual name for that. Yeah, like it's a, I've read about it. Yeah, yeah. So we know it's real, yes. But you would think that it would be something I experience because I have so many, like, <laughs> nerves right. or whatever the hell. Yeah. You got But maybe yours stuff. are, like, external, not internal. Maybe. You know? I'm dead inside. We all <laughs> get out. That. No, That's you know, because like confirmed. it's different than like <clears throat> external stimuli. It's more like I feel inside my body. I don't know. Yeah, you're it's really weird. in touch with your yeah. inner being. That's real yes, nice, yes, Sarah. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, why mm. didn't you comment on that video I posted on our Insta story of those two ladies singing the Golden Girl theme song? Oh my God, it was hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. If you, got, you know what I was thinking? I was like, oh man, we should recreate this. And then, uh, and then, I turn, and then instead of, of me commenting, I instead watched it a million times to see how long it would take me to like, memorize exactly how to do that. <laughs> so my attention was, it was elsewhere. Maybe I should have included you in my thought and my, my, you know, how the I thought about that. The next time we're in the same room. Oh, oh. Speaking of Golden Girls. Oh my God. I can't believe I waited this long to bring this up. Let's Can hear you it. believe it? Nope. Okay. So, people out there who are like, <laughs> what the goddamn hell is she talking about? I got the m- most exciting email from my aunt. Yeah, I mean, of all time. Of all time. It was great. I'm trying to pull it up. Oh, let me pull up my text message to you so because I, I screenshotted it and, <clears throat> and sent it to Susie immediately. So, a few episodes ago, we were talking about the Golden Girls and how much we love them. And all casual, like my aunt who listens to the show, shout out to Aunt Peggy. She said, uh, <laughs> listen to your podcast last night and uh, I feel I'm near you when I do. So two points, she, your grandma's mm-hmm. flower is an amaryllis and great yours is blooming. Mine is more dormant. And <laughs> at Golden Girls, dot, 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 the tiny elderly one is Uncle David's first cousin. That's my uncle. I she, can't. Used, she used to visit us. Last week I, when I was tasked at going through some photos, I came upon photos of her. I'll find them and take them over to you someday. What? That's fantastic. She could have come to our Thanksgiving and like, <laughs> I mean, what? I know. Oh my gosh. I what am was she by waiting marriage for related to, tell you that? to one of the Golden Girls. Aunt Peggy, why That's did you not That's my claim to fame. This? I mean. <laughs> That's my claim to fame. It's too good. It's so it's great. I don't know amazing. why that makes me so that like because like I, I don't know. I feel like that's even cooler than if you told me one of my like relatives was like a former president. I'm like, yeah, but like, <laughs> what about the Golden Girl? <laughs> yeah. Did if you had to choose one to be connected to, would you have chosen Sophia Petrillo? Yes. Or, yeah, I mean, she's pretty spectacular. A hundred percent. And then my my aunt referred to her as the tiny, like the tiny <laughs> old one. And I was she's like, right. so cute. Yes. So then I went to like, I told Ren and I went into like a whole story of like, you know, the Golden Girls and like blah, 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 blah. And how um, uh, uh, they found out when she passed away, um, Blanche <laughs> was a hoarder. Oh. Did you hear this? I They're like, she I had a did. ton of stuff. Yeah. yeah. That, but that the, thing, that's so interesting to me. It doesn't surprise me, but I just wonder if she was sad. But maybe she mm. wasn't sad. She was just happily hoarding, which is, yeah, you know, that's, fine. Yeah, that could be a thing. Yeah, Maybe. totally. Happily hoarding? I don't know. But uh, it just it would have been better only if it had been Betty White because she could oh. still come to Thanksgiving. This is true. This is true. Yeah. But I feel like Betty White, I might have heard about that somewhere. <laughs> but do you think that your Uncle David looked like Estelle? I do not um, see it. I could see it. I could see oh, it. Oh, he's you, Jewish. Yes. 
Right. So, like, like family is very Jewish, and he's got, like, it, my aunt, Uncle David was very lean, but he was mm. tall. So if you mm-hmm. took his same body type and put it on a teeny tiny <laughs> little woman, him. it would totally fit. And Aww. he definitely had the same personality. <laughs> I mean, Which as the character, ideal. but I could imagine that she was pretty similar. Oh, my God. I mean, what the heck is the actress's name? Estelle Getty. Estelle Getty. Yes. Mm-hmm. Estelle Getty is related to me by marriage. That's so fun. Anyways, that was my little, little That's fun. That's the most fun. Yes, yes. And I think everybody is looking for these things to celebrate right now, and I encourage it. Yeah, maybe that was a, a, a that was it. Is it was like yes. a fun like little celebration? Yes, um, it's light in a dark world, man. Yes, shine yes. it. Um, oh, this is so funny because like a thousand things that you just said, I could turn into a hilarious segue. Um, <laughs> okay, you know, light in a dark world, shine it. Um, tell you want to hear a story, but what about something awful that happened in the Temple of the Sun in Machu Picchu? <gasps> yes. Did you hear about this? No. Oh my gosh, you're gonna die. So this this is right <laughs> up uh, up our alley, and uh, about um, you know our other favorite subject besides penises. Guess. What's Ooh. our favorite set? Yes. Okay, here we go. Six tourists were just arrested after <laughs> authorities found no. that they took a giant dump in the Temple of the Sun in Machu Picchu. That is sick. Isn't that awful? Yes. Six people pooped? Uh, yeah. So it was a group made up of one Frenchman, two Brazilians, two Ar- Argentinians, <laughs> and a Chilean, according to the police. And okay. they were hiking in Machu Picchu. Remember when I told you that they're going to shut down? Like, I feel like Machu Picchu is going to get shut down because of all the people. Like, yes. How, and you I, predicted I'm like, it's, this. Uh, yep. It's totally a thing. But thank goodness they're like arresting people for it now. Okay. And the okay. O- but, but the wait. only reason that it, they got in trouble, like, you. You can, oh, it's so gross to talk about or to think about, but like you're supposed, it's everything is a, uh, uh, like you have to yes. take what you bring. Yes. Situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you're supposed to pick it up and discard it later. Yeah. Leave no trace. That's mm-hmm. a nicer way to say it, mm-hmm. I suppose. And um, yeah. So, <laughs> Sarah, but, wait. No, I'm just like trying to think about like why it would be illegal. So, like, it's the only reason that, they got arrested though and why nobody else does is because they did it inside a heritage site like a world heritage of course. site How they the did fuck it does but that? like all of machu picchu like the 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 temple was a world heritage site but i don't think that machu picchu like the trail is considered that because if yeah. that were the case people would be arrested right and left Right? Yeah, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. But like, I don't think you who, need to go in what? the temple. I feel like this is right up there with the the graffiti. That you're like, <laughs> like they, I mean, it's not. It's like, but taking a shit like that act of like they found an actual crack in the the they did it like on the site. Like they no, found. It's terrible. Oh my god, it's funny that I said a crack. But I, I know why you laugh now because I was like, "What's so funny about that, Susie?" And then I was like, "Oh wait, I, I heard it. I heard it as soon as I said it." Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So they there was like there was a piece of stone that had broken off a wall and caused a crack in the floor, and they used that to take a dump in. What the fuck? Hold on a minute. This is the part that I'm hung up on. Yeah. What? Why? How do six people poop at once? All of them. <sighs> I the, I don't know because this there wasn't a lot and I even looked at like three I looked at the um, report from like a French newspaper about it too and they didn't give any other information about like who did who who done it you know like I think it was one of those maybe guilty by association kind of things that okay, they were all yeah. there yeah, together who, and like nobody stopped it. them you know <sighs> like if you were with a group and one person was tagging and like graffiti yeah you know, then mm-hmm. I feel like the whole group isn't you know you're kind of all in trouble for this right. I don't know. Oh my God. But do you don't think worry. it was an emergency or do you think they were just disrespectful? I think they were being disrespectful because of That's where awful. they did it. An emergency, you don't think, oh my God, I'm going to go right on the, like, I'm going to aim yeah. on, like, it seemed very intentional. Why would, yeah. um, how do they expect you to clean it up if it's not a solid BM? You're supposed to go into like a bag. Like they have these like oh, portable yeah. okay. toilets. So mm-hmm. you go in there and then it goes into a bag. 
Yeah, go right in the bag. And they dispose of the bag. Yeah, exactly. But these people were not doing that, and that's, like, awful. Um, but they face at least four years in prison if they're That's ridiculous. Guilty. That's stupid. That seems like a lot. I think you should just charge a fine. A fine. Nobody should go to jail because they a, shit. Yeah, like, because it's... Oh, oh, my God. And you know what? That, that, I, that makes me think of... Remember those... Um, Oh, what are they called? Nask Nasca lines or something like that. We talked about this a long time ago. That those those big, they're in South America somewhere, and they're like the big drawings that you can see from like space. And some trucker drove over them yeah. because he was taking a shortcut. I can't yeah. remember what they're <laughs> yes. called right now. Yes. Yes. I feel yes. like all that person got was a fine, right? If I remember correctly. And, and I want to say seems... that was considered a World Heritage Site. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're, like, really trying to, like, I don't know, put the stop to shitting on Maybe landmark. there's more to this story. Maybe they, yeah. like, used their hand and spread it all out. Oh, goodness you know, gracious. You like something this crazy. This is the crazy thing. Like, to think that you're going to pay, you're going <laughs> to get, like, get the ticket, wait in line, do the whole thing. Like, it's, you have to, it's, it's a trek. Like, you have to make... You have to have intention to go and like to to want to go to a, a a world heritage site just to shit on it doesn't seem like I don't know. It seems like anybody who would want to visit there would have respect for the place. Yeah, right. That's what I can't understand. Maybe they were wasted. <clears throat> you know, but then like with hooligans. with Machu Picchu, you have to like. When you get to the Temple of the Sun, it's already like three days into the hike, if you hiked the mm. whole thing. And so by that, and you have to carry everything that you bring in. So you by that time, most of the time you're out of booze. So, oh, Right. Good point. Yeah. I mean, or at least that was our experience. Crazy. Right. Yes. Yes. Would you yeah. do that again? I know it wasn't a great experience for you, but yeah. do you think um, it would be better if you did it again? Uh, I... <clears throat> Now, see, now it's like a moral thing. Would I do it again? Like, mm. I don't know if I would. Because you think nobody should do it. Because I think nobody should do it. Really? Nobody should do the hike you did? I just don't think, or I, I think it should be way, way, way more limited. Like, I think I there agree. should be, I think they should should limit the, the tickets and li- and maybe make them more expensive and then maybe make it, like, they just have to change some, they have to make it more regulated. And I feel like the, um, the, uh, 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 what are they called? They're not called Sherpas there. They're called um, porters. The porters are, um, you know, in some ways like taken advantage of and what's the word I'm looking for? Um, exploited. Exploited, yes. Mm-hmm. I think they're exploited. So I don't like that. I think it needs it needs some kind of protection. But I mean, I also tourism in general. Tourism, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very problematic worldwide, Super not just problematic. there. Super problematic. I mean, you know, and then I think about the like those the like the glass bridges in China and like all the things that you know or even like I don't know. I just think, ugh, it's really scary. Mhm. Yeah, people ruin everything. Humans are the worst. Sure do. Yeah, we know that. Oh, oh my God. I'm trying to think. Oh, my gosh. I have another thing that humans did that's the worst. It's not like, it's not as bad as this because it's definitely not, um, you know, taking a shit on a national monument or something like that. <laughs> but uh, KFC and mm. Crocs got together oh. and came out with a KFC Croc. Oh. Have you I seen this? It's beautiful. <laughs> I think I did. I don't think I could forget that. You did not see it? Oh, well, don't, don't you did. worry. I'm going to send you a picture right now so that you, you can enjoy this. I thought you were going to say a pair. And I was going to be really excited. A pair? I thought you were going to send me a pair oh, of Crocs. Oh, my God. What if? No, I think they're all sold out. Like, you can't even get a pair oh, of them yeah. right now. It's, like, become, like, a fashion thing. So this, I can't even believe that this is a thing, that two companies like this teamed up. And so what it looks like is, like, a... a it looks like the box, the bottom of the shoe looks kind of like a KFC box, and the top of the shoe is adorned with a chicken nugget kind of tassel-looking thing, mm. and the top is designed to look like a box of fried chicken. Wow. How do you feel about this? I... Oh, and, and if you're looking for a more fashionable version, they also have it in a platform. <laughs> it's for, for some height. F- for some height. <laughs> yeah. I kind of love it. Oh, oh, and the other feature that I totally forgot to add, they're scented. 
No. Yep. Yep. Scented fried okay, chicken. That I love. That I love. That would make me hungry. Yes, I'm, I'm I, hungry just thinking about it. I had to stop wearing um, uh, Palmer's cocoa butter because it would make me hungry for peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> no. For real. I was like, I can't wear this because it makes me so hungry for peanut butter sandwiches. How about how my kid does not like peanut butter? Is it because it sticks to the roof of your mouth? I I don't know, but Adam doesn't like it and neither does Lincoln. It Adam is the doesn't weirdest like thing. it. Is it the flavor or the texture? Well, he says they don't really have it in England. It's not like a thing. So he didn't grow up with it. So for him, it's just like weird. But they got um, Nutella and other stuff like that. They got spreads. Yeah, so it must not be the texture then. It must be the flavor. Oh. Isn't that shocking? And I Lincoln love won't it. eat like chicken nuggets or anything that kids normally what? love. It's so yeah, sad. Yeah, but that's good. That's fine. He's just, mm. got, a, he's just got a refined palate. Mm, he's fancy. I mean, he likes I just sushi. feel like he's really missing out, though, he, on maybe comfort he'll come foods. around later. Yeah. He'll like comfort There's foods. There's hope. Thank it's you, It's different, Sarah. for sure. <laughs> it's different. It's a different kind of comfort food. Like, he likes probably, like, your curry is going to be his comfort food. Do you... Is there, like, a super popular food that you hate? Mm, uh Oh, yes. I hate lasagna because too much melted oh, cheese. Yeah, and you hate some cheese just generally. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Oh, uh, I hate quesadillas. Blech. Wow. Yeah. Anything with like that, where cheese is the number one, where cheese is, is driving the, 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 you know, meal, the, the driving ship. I'm not, I'm not down for that. I feel like I mean, there staring must at have these been... chicken, K- Kentucky Fried Chicken Crocs, so I'm getting hungry. So it's def- <laughs> I would definitely not say k- ch- fried chicken. Yeah. It's not snobbery. That yeah. is the problem. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. It's more like a lot of snobby stuff. I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah, anything with a ton of cheese, I'm not into. Except with the exception of macaroni and cheese, because but it has to be like good macaroni and cheese. Like when you make the like the roux or whatever it's called, like the yeah, the, like it, don't just like dump all the cheese on there. Blech. Wow, she's so specific. Yeah. Good thing Ren can handle all these requests. Oh yeah, he's good. He's fantastic. But you know, he doesn't like. Um, like a, he doesn't like his his like dinner his to ha- be like a su- like he doesn't like sweet in his savory foods. What would be an example of that? Um, like a um, raspberry balsamic dressing oh. on a salad, or like a mango salsa. Mmm, that really does limit you, doesn't it? But he loves dessert, so it's really it's like we that mean, that just means that we got to eat the salt, the savory at dinner, and we get the sweet at dessert. Yeah, you so. just compartmentalize. That's totally. Fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. That's what do so you funny. not like? What do you not like? And we both don't like mayonnaise, which is great because that never goes on anything. I can't think of anything. Although I would agree with you, I'm not a lasagna kind of gal. I don't know yeah. what the big fuss is with everybody. It's so I hard don't to either. Make. Like, what's the big deal about lasagna? <laughs> We're mad about it. Right. Everybody's always like, oh, I'm making a lasagna. I'm like, okay. okay. I mean, it fills a hole. Layers of of cheese, layers of meat, what else? No carb left behind. It's (laughs) a whole thing. (laughs) But I I would much rather have pretty much any other pasta. Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, give me carbonara every day. (laughs) Twice. Have you had that yet in quarantine? Quarantine Uh, carbonara? We had it right before. Right for my birthday. I think it's time again. Yeah, we were talking about that because we have mm. all the ingredients. Yeah, so go ahead. except I like peas in my carbonara, and Ren does not like peas. You got to make two batches. That's all. Right? Because would you like cheese in, or peas in there? Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think they mm-hmm. belong in there. And then, like when it, you add a little bit of green, it makes me think that I'm eating healthy. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, fine. right. That's There's what some I green. Like. That's totally it. I just throw like a, anything green, like top something, sprinkle some green onions on my fried rice, and I'm like healthy. <laughs> Look at the green. Now that we're all uh, hungry, I think we ought to go eat. Yeah. We'll just like go back to our little quarantine caves and yep. have a nosh. Hey, can you send me the recipe for your egg salad sandwich? Oh, I mean, I just now wing that I'm it, making yeah. a homemade homemade bread, like you know, oh. by the loaves. Maybe I should put it on our Instagram too. Do yes, you can me? you? Because <laughs> hey, shout out to all the people who made the cookies. Yes. Because a whole bunch of you did. So like, and then they were like, these are the best. And I was like, yeah, they are. So thanks for doing that. That was real fun. Okay. So maybe I love this, this like crowd involvement. Together. You guys are awesome. I love, I love you guys. 
Um, and I love when they leave us five star reviews. That is awesome. And t- po- tag us. I get so excited when people tag us and stuff. Tag us and then send us cool articles that you find. I mean, there's so much cool stuff out there. We love so, you guys. love you. We'll Bye. see you next time. Bye. Bye.